This, ladies and gentlemen, is a CPU. This particular CPU is an Intel Core i7. Now, we've probably heard of the term CPU or central processing unit. Uh, the, probably the better term to use is microprocessor. A lot of people call these guys the brain of the computer. And it's not really a brain. It's more of a really, really incredible calculator. It can add, subtract, multiply, and divide in, in billions of times a second. Now, in order for us to understand how all this works, I like to use an analogy, the concept that I like to call man in box. First of all, let me introduce you to my little friend, the man in the box. Now, he's not in a box yet. There's a reason for that. See, this little guy is absolutely amazing. He can add, subtract, multiply, divide, move huge numbers around. He can do all kinds of amazing stuff. In fact, if you give him enough information, he can make things like Microsoft Windows work, and we can play online games, and we can just do all kinds of amazing stuff with this guy. The problem is, is that, well, he's in a box. Now, before we take this analogy any further, I need you to understand something. I am a nerd. I love technology. The level of technology you need to understand with CPUs is pretty vast for the A-plus exam. As a result of that, we're going to use this man-in-box analogy to understand some pretty hairy technology. For example, uh, level 1, level 2 cache, pipelines, mo motherboard speed, CPU speed, clock multipliers. There's a lot to learn. So those of you who are going, ah, he's talking about a box, bear with me. This gets really, really cool really, really quick. Now, information is the important issue here. What we've got to do is come up with combinations of ones and zeros that mean something to us and to the man in box. So what we have to do is hand the man in box basically a code book. So here's, here's kind of a quick example of what a code book might look like. Now, I'm simplifying this code book dramatically, but it does pretty much work this way. Now, this code book allows us to communicate and get things done. But before we close the lid and get everything going, we're going to have to add something else inside the box. What we're going to do is we're going to put four sawhorses inside the box. Each one of these sawhorses has 16 light bulbs on top of it. And again, it has a switch for each one of the different light bulbs. We can't see these sawhorses outside the box. These sawhorses are more popularly known as registers, or to be even more detailed, they're called general purpose registers. Inside every CPU are lots and lots of different registers, so I'm only showing you four of the most simplistic ones. On modern PCs, there can be hundreds of registers, so we're keeping it pretty simple here. So I'm going to name these registers. I'm going to name them AX, BX, CX, and DX. So now what we have is a code book. We have this external data bus and we have four registers. With these tools, we can begin to communicate with the guy inside the box. Now, now w wait a minute. How in the world can things going on and off in racks of light bulbs actually work as a communication device? I mean, something's going on here with patterns of on and off. I can buy into that, but to appreciate how all this really works, what we've got to do is dive deep, deep, deep into the world of binary. I'll see you at the lab. I've got a modern CPU right here, and if you look closely, you can see that there are hundreds and hundreds of tiny little wires. But these wires either have a voltage on them, or they have, a, or they have no voltage. And that's where the light bulb analogy works nicely, because if there's a voltage, the light bulb's on. If there is no voltage, then the light bulb's off. However, since we only really have wires, what we do instead of saying words like on and off, we say, if there's a voltage, we say the number one, and if there's no voltage, we say the number zero. This is binary. Binary is a wonderful numbering system for dealing with lots and lots of wires like we have in CPUs. So, if you want to learn how CPUs work, you need to appreciate how binary works. Now, the A-plus exam has a number of questions you're going to run into that are straight. How do you convert this binary value into a regular number? So, pay attention. To learn how to count in binary, now everybody pay attention class, come on. What I need everybody to do is hold up two fists, just like that, all right? Now, as we're looking at this, let's all count together, you ready? Now first off, with no fingers up, that's a zero. And that's where we start whenever we're counting in the computer world, is with zero. So we're going to do zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now if I want to keep going, notice that ten fingers is all of our fingers up. This is what we call base 
10 mathematics. If we had been born with 8 fingers, we'd be doing what would be called base 8 mathematics. The bottom line is, we ran out of fingers, but we want to keep counting. So what we have to do is we put a 1 up there to say we've got one group of all of our fingers. Does that make sense to you? So we have one group of all of our fingers. And if we were to count, now we'll put our fingers back to zeros here. And now if we count again, so now it's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. If we want to keep going, we bring all of our fingers down and then we put another one up there. Now we have two. Since we have 10 fingers, it's really easy for us to do base 10 mathematics. And here is zero. Zero in binary is the same as zero in base 10. Okay. Now what I want to do is count to one. One in binary is the same as one in base 10. But now we're going to count to two. The problem is in binary, we don't have the number two, do we? So what we have to do now is instead of saying two, we have to say one and then zero. You get the idea? Now to count to number three, it's one, one. To number four, it's one, zero, zero. To get to the number five, it's one, zero, one. You want me to keep going? How about this? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can keep counting all day like this. So in a binary world, this is how your computer looks at numbers like the number five. Got the idea? Great. Now the A plus is going to ask you some questions about binary. They're not going to be too, too terribly exciting, but you will have a few. Make sure that you can count to binary up to about the value, I don't know, make it about 16 in base 10. Just go ahead and practice counting. Start with z all zeros and then one, then one zero, then one one, and just count like that and you won't have any problems on some very, very simple binary questions on the A-plus exam.